G'day, this is Andrew Price with a uh, new type of video. Well, this is a one-off maybe, but I'm gonna be taking uh, some blend files that uh, people sent in to me, and I am going to be improving the lighting, trying to improve the lighting, starting with uh, this guy right here. So this was sent in by Mobin S, and uh, this is it, it's a mafia dude. Uh, by the way, these uh, blend files were sent in. I did a call out. I got like 100 submissions. And these were the three that I thought were pretty good. And also, uh, the authors of these files graciously let me provide them to you to download as well. So if you haven't downloaded them, I would suggest you do it because I, w I would suggest try lighting it yourself first before you watch the rest of this video because you'll learn a lot more. Trust me. Um, but anyways, this is one we're going to start with. I removed all the lighting in it um, so that I can start afresh. And I also removed this smoky thing uh, just because I felt like it was too distracting. Like you can have like stylized smoke like this, but I think it really only makes sense and it fits when the rest of the scene is stylized as well. And this character is a little bit too realistic. So I thought, let's just pull it. <laughs> so uh, anyways, um, I'm using Blender 2.8 and this specific scene was made in EV which is very cool. Um, you just add a point lamp um, and you can see now, uh, yeah, the cool thing is, is it's in real time, right? You don't have to wait for things to render, which is very cool. The only downside is, is that when you're using EV, you gotta fiddle around with all these settings for the light, like contact shadows and all that kind of thing. Just turn on contact shadows and like crank up the distance and turn down your softness. Oh, is it that softness? This softness. Ah, oh, there's always one of these things. Like, see this, like, weird effect there? I always hate that. Okay, bleed bias. I guess that's what we're going to start with. Anyway, I'm not off to a good start. Anyway, <laughs> so when I am approaching lighting, right, lighting something, the first question I ask myself is what do I want to say with this, right? Because if you wanted to just create something that looks cool, that could be a totally different, you know, uh, process than... I want to create something to show off the specific sculpting that I did, for example, so that I can maybe get a job in the industry or something. Because um, that would be like, you'd want to show the form. Whereas if I want to create something cool, I might want to hide form, you know, it depends on what you're going for. But I'm just going to show like what I would do for this specific thing. Everyone's got a different take on it. I'm going to try and make a story, right? So this is a mafia boss. Um, I don't think there's any point in making him look like he was lit in a studio. Let's put him in an environment. So I'm going to pretend that there is a car headlight, right? So this light here is going to be a car headlight. And it's got to be a little far away from him, which is important for fall off, which we talked about in uh, the lighting course, right? So I put it around about here. And let's just crank up this light. Um, so as I mentioned as well, like you want to use false color if you want to check like the exposure of something. I just want to make sure that this gray value is somewhere on the face, which gray would be like at zero exposure. So it's pretty good. Um, and let's go back to Filmic. There we go. Okay, so the car headlight is there. Looks looks pretty good. Okay, turn up. Uh, was my distance enough? Oh, hang on. Distance, there we go. Yeah, you just gotta make sure you got the distance of your contact light, uh, contact shadows, I mean. Okay, so if, if I pull this all the way out here, you can see that it's flattening him, uh, like flattening the, the volume, the, the shape of him. So if I put, and it also reveals too much of his face, like too much of his character. Whereas I want to sort of make this guy, like he's a mafia boss, right? Like he's kind of, he's a little scary. Like who is he? He's a little creepy, right? Um, so I'm putting it to the side and I'll also just make it look like the light is lower than him, right? Car headlight, somewhere about there. Um, and I'll move it just so that this eye starts to fall into shadow. And I just want to try to get this line here, like that specific uh, brow there. I want that to be, uh, I want that to be highlighted so it looks like he's kind of angry, perhaps, right? Just a, I don't know, something I'm trying, right? Let's go false color. Um, oh yeah, the other thing, like if you if you use like in the color management section, you can adjust the exposure, which is kind of a way, like instead of having to tweak each of the lamps one by one, it just adjusts the camera exposure. So it's like a kind of a way to like. <laughs> without having to jump back and forth. Anyway, so I got one lamp, that's pretty good. Now it's nighttime, right? Um, so let's add in a blue like moonlight because also you can see like there's no shape around him. I don't know where he stops and where the background starts. So I'm just gonna duplicate this lamp and let's make this sort of a light blue color like this. And let's put it behind him 
like that. So it's just sort of highlighting his coat there. Now it's bringing him off the, the, the background a bit. So a little bit bluish like that. And it's like the sky. So let's make this radius really big. And you can see that when you do that, it kind of like, it highlights more areas of the, the hat and everything. So something weird happens with Eevee though, when you go like too high. So yeah, oh, this bleed value. These, these values, I swear, I never know what would actually <laughs> correct a lot of this stuff. I know that like softness, oh, eh, softness actually improved that a little bit. Softness, gen oh, there we go. It's the softness of this value that's not good. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's, that's, it's cool. Like Eevee is fun, but it's also can be annoying sometimes. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's good. Now this this is okay, but he's a little too ominous. Like we want to see the rest of him, um, like some of his face here. Now you could just add like an area lamp, which would be like just a small lamp here to kind of show that. And that's one way to do it, that's okay. But I'm telling a story here, right? So it's, there's a car headlight. What other light could there be? There could be another car headlight, right? Like this, or it could be the back of a car, like a red tail light, right? Um, like maybe he's parked on the side of the road, there's moonlight, and he's got the trunk open, and who's in the trunk? Oh, it's some um, poor fella, I don't know, right? Um, now, oh, here's the other thing, right? So if I, if I pull this out here, you can see that his whole coat is like lit up here, right? And it's kind of like, like using that emphasis thing that we talked about in the last video. Um, it's kind of like, it's, it's too like a blanket uniform amount of light. Whereas if I pulled this in close, you can see that now the light is almost exclusively on his face, like that, which is really what I want. I want just his face. I want that to be the focal element. So I'm putting that there. And now let's turn this down so that we can still see it, but like it's, yeah, it's obviously um, not as bright. So something like that. And the other thing that I'm gonna do, I want this little cigarette butt to be casting some light as well, okay? You wouldn't normally have it necessarily, right? Um, like what I mean is like the, the amount of light that this car headlight would be creating, you would not be able to see any light coming from a cigarette butt, but yeah, we're a little bit stylized, right? We're having a little bit of a creative license. So I'm gonna duplicate this and then where I put that 3D cursor, shift S, cursor to selection, and hey, his face is on fire. Uh, so let's dial that back, something like that. Ah, eh, it's horrible. Dial back the softness. Is it the softness? Uh, where is it? You always, you always fiddling around with the, oh, actually that actually kind of improved it. Okay, and now dial back the brightness. And the other thing I wanna do is you can see it's sort of casting light every, oh, also different color, a little bit yellow like that and custom distance. So I, I don't want that to be light everywhere. I'm just gonna, you know, stylize it and make the light fall off like about there perhaps. I don't know, something like that. It's a little, I don't know, it's a little weird, but it could work. Just subtle, right? Something just a little bit like that to kind of show part of his face and some of the scene. Um, and that's pretty good. Now, the other thing I wanna do I've been watching YouTube. <laughs> um, I want to put a background in it, right? Because it's just black and it's like, eh, you know, it, it just doesn't look as professional, right? So I, if I typed in fog forest, that was what I was going for. I also typed in like night forest. You can quickly like just grab one of these images. The one that I actually used was, uh, there it is, this one here. You just download that. And I mean, I tried like three, four, five, whatever it was. Um, and what I do, I just wanna chuck it in the background, right? So I'm just gonna go file, import images as planes, and that'll save me from having to actually like add in a plane, apply the texture and get the aspect ratio. Then I just click on shadeless. Oh, by the way, I'm sure most of you already know this, but that add-on, it's in Blender by default, but you gotta turn it on. So you type in, import images as planes. You turn that on and then you've got the file, import images as planes. Anyway, so I check that. I'm gonna make it shadeless. I'm not gonna use any alpha and I'm gonna hit import. And there we go. Mr. Forrest himself. Okay, so um, we could put it like right behind him, but I wanna use some depth of field from the camera to make that part look like out of focus. So I'm gonna put that in the background, point of view of the camera. Let's scale that up. 
and then rotate it so it's sort of like facing the camera a bit. Um, and then move it up. Actually, I want this bright area to be behind him so we can just see some of the trees in the background. Now, obviously, the color of this is way too much. So I'm going to the node editor. And just for this thing right here, all I'm going to do is add in a hue saturation value node. And then I'm going to turn down the value like drastically to like something like that. Right. And I'm going to change the hue and make it look a little bit bluer. Not that blue, something like that. And look at that. Um, and the camera, I think by default, I already had the camera set to have a uh, depth of field. Um, where's my camera? There it is. I'm already selected it. There we go. Um, yeah, so I set it like I the focus object to be the bandage. Uh, but anyway, oh, I just did like a little uh, camera course, like watching YouTube over the weekend. F-stop, it goes in like 1, 1.4. 2, 2.8, except but like there's certain stops. So an f-stop of 1.9 doesn't exist. So I'm going to go 1.4. Um, not that it makes much of a difference. This is more like stylized. But anyway, I just thought like, let's try to keep it consistent there. Um, and that's basically it. I would call this pretty well finished. I would do a render of this. This is the one that I ended up with. So I think I, I went a little darker on the face. It's up to you. Um, and I also added in some uh, smoke which was, again, I just typed in smoke on Pixabay. And, uh, oh, I literally typed in Pixabay. <laughs> this one right here, right? This is the one that I ended up with. Um, I took that into Photoshop and then you use the lighten blend mode and then you've got like the smoke and then you add that in and it's much easier than having to do smoke simulation. If it's not for an animation, like who cares? It's static and it's gonna look way better than anything you could generate with a smoke sim anyway. So I went with that. Um, but there you go guys. So that is the Mafia boss uh, done and dusted. All right, next up we have this lounge room by Blake Lisman. So this was his, um, no, oh, what have I done? I do not know the shortcuts of 2.8 yet. So I hit something. This was his uh, image that he sent through. And you can see that he went with a very sort of, just an overcast day, like sort of white light coming in through the window. Um, now I asked for his permission to do this. Um, I rearranged the house a bit to make it something that you guys could play with a little bit easier. Um, because I felt like currently, like with his, his setup, there was only two windows on the left-hand side and you couldn't really control a lot. And also I felt like some of these books were a little jarring in their colors. So I wanted to make it a little bit more uniform. And I also felt like that room on the right there could just sort of be sealed off to make uh, things render a little bit faster. So, uh, and I also rearranged the furniture a bit, but it, this was for a real scene, like a real like blueprint of a house. So he didn't have this creative control, but I did. Um, <laughs> anyway, he let me do this. Uh, so let's let's try to improve this. Now, this you could go for a nighttime scene if you wanted to, but that's something we didn't talk about in the lighting course, which is like interior lighting. That's like a whole different ball game. Uh, briefly, if you wanted to know about it, like. Uh, you would want to, like for interior lighting, have accent lighting, which is like lighting to, um, hmm, accent lighting to emphasize areas of interest within the room. So sort of like down lights over couches. That's one part. That's, so there's four parts to interior lighting. This is like speed through of like interior lighting course. Um, <laughs> so accent lighting over areas of interest, down lights over tables, things like that. Decorative lighting. Um, that actually doesn't cast much lighting, but it's supposed to look like it is. So like a chandelier or um, like a candle or, or something like that to make it look like it's casting lighting, but it's actually not there for that purpose. Um, and then ambient lighting. And this is a very clear, like this is a really important one. It's like bounce, like a sort of a, a nice sort of soft lighting over everything. So usually like you bounce lighting off the ceiling and it creates like sort of a warm filled in light to everything. And then the, the fourth and final one is task lighting. So like a reading lamp over a couch or um, LEDs are like over a kitchen bench, that kind of thing. But anyways, that, I'm not gonna do the, the uh, nighttime interior one for this um, since I feel like it wasn't really explained much in the course. I'm just gonna do a daytime scene, right? Which is pretty common for interior architectural renders anyway. So we're restricted to uh, like natural light. So the sky is uh, this, this white light here. So the sky is blue. <laughs> That's a quote. You can quote me as that. Um, I'm happy to uh, go down in history as the guy that said it was blue. 
So we'll go with that. So the sky is nice and blue. Now we've got to have a sun, right? Because this is just pretty drab at the moment. By the way, uh, if you see lamps over these doors here, these are just portal lamps, which is like an area lamp. Oh, gosh. Okay, 2.8, it's in beta. Uh, it just has a portal enabled, and it just means that more rays are gonna be guided in through the windows. I got a video on it if you wanna check it out. Anyways, uh, so I'm gonna add in a sun lamp, okay? And just make it come in through the window. Um, let's rotate it so we can see it a little bit. Increase the brightness, maybe not too much, something like that. And then the, sh the size of it, like you can see that if you set the size of the sun all the way to zero, it's like a really harsh, needle point uh, shadow, uh, which is not what you really want, but you don't want something really drastically smooth either. So something something about there will be fine. Um, I mean, you just do this by eye, really. I mean, depending on cloud cover and everything, there's not an exact value anyway. So whatever you, you think will look nice. Now, as I mentioned in the last part of the lighting series, when it comes to environments, most of this is gonna be determined like, like most of your lighting decisions should be decided by composition because this is where your eyes are gonna look. So in this case, I actually think like these back, this back TV and this back bookshelf is probably where you want the eyes to actually look. So I'm gonna have the light come in like pretty harsh, right? Like it's coming in like it's a sunset or something. And let's have it go that away. Yeah, something like that, right? Um, this, I might change this, I don't know. But anyway, let's go for something a little yellow as well. Like this is like morning sunrise. Yeah. So this is like a pro tip. Like I always thought like, what's the difference between sunset and sunrise? Not a lot really, other than I think sunset is generally speaking um, a little bit more saturated colors, I think. But then now that I think about it, it's just like tilting of the earth. Like, ah, uh, like there shouldn't really be a difference, but there kind of is. So this kind of feels more like morning light, whereas something like, like this kind of feels a little bit more like a sunset. So anyway, I'm gonna go for like morning light, nice fresh early morning. And you could leave it like this, but it's a little bland. And also, as the last part of the last video, remember I talked about implied lighting, which is casting shadows in from things outside of a scene to make the scene look bigger than it actually is. So let's do that and throw some tree lighting in here. So I just got this off of Polygon. This texture here, we don't actually have a lot of these textures on Polygon, we should probably add more. But anyways, this, no, it wasn't that one. It was this one, this one. Any of these will do, but just something like alpha mask trees. You can get them anywhere online. You could use any of these. These will be fine as well. Um, but it's just something that's alpha masked. You're not even gonna see the color of it, so it doesn't even really matter how it looks, just the shape of it. And then you want to, just like I mentioned before, import images as planes. We're gonna use that as well. I mean, again, and it just looks like this. And I'm gonna set this to diffuse, use alpha. That's the important one, use alpha because uh, otherwise you're not gonna have any transparent shadows and that would be a waste. So rotate this. Uh, I'm just gonna position it somewhere near the door until we can see it. There we go. Got some nice little tree shadows, I guess. Um, you know, now that I think about it, like this is actually a pretty heavy shadow. Um, it's a little heavy. I, I kind of want something where like the light is sort of coming through the branches a little bit more. So let's go with like, Let's go with this. This one might actually come out better. <laughs> um, normally I would I would prepare this, but like I don't know, I, I did the render before and I was like, yeah, this will be fine. But now that I'm thinking about it, like <clears throat> looking at this, like it would be better if we could have like some more interesting shapes come through um, because currently we don't have a lot of control over the composition, right? So anyway, we've got a render happening right now and I have a very slow internet because I'm in Australia and um, Evidently our government messed up the internet. <laughs> Called the National Broadband Network. And uh, we spent $62 billion on a uh, broadband network for the whole country. And it still hasn't been delivered. And uh, <laughs> it's like my parents just got it at their house. It's like 30 megabits a second. And that's supposed to be like mind blowing. It's like, oh my gosh, we're so far behind. Anyway, so that's Australia. Um, anyways, filling in some time. Let's bring in that new uh, that new tree. So let's go import, image, <clears throat> import images as planes. 
Let's go back, back, and we got the new one here, this one. Diffuse, use alpha straight. Yes. All right, increase this and this. And let's see, let's hope this is better. Is it better? I hope it is, otherwise I've just wasted a lot of your time by downloading a texture that I'm not gonna use. Um, I just want it to, hmm. Is it better? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. Let's try the other side, rotate a little bit. Um, okay, I mean really we, we just wanna have the appearance of trees, right? Like there's something outside the window. Um, I could actually, now that I think about it, we could make this shadow size a little sharper so we could actually see the definition of the trees, but then that's also going to make it look like the trees are closer to the window because the closer the object is to something, the, hard, the sharper those shadows are going to be. Um, so, I don't know, something like this could be okay. <laughs> could be. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, you, we could turn down the brightness here. Uh, we could adjust the contrast overall of the entire interior. And I will probably use false color to check what my values are. Yeah, we're getting near the edge of the exposure for, but like most of the scene is in the middle there, which is pretty good. Um, what I will do though, is I will go medium high contrast, something like that. And that'll just make it look a little bit more punchy because the filmic tends to make things look a little washed out, but that's deliberate so that you've got a lot more range to play with. But then if you use one of these, it'll look a little a little punchier. Anyways, this, whoops, that's not it. This was the one that I actually ended up with for my final uh, render. Um, sent it to Blake and he said, wow, look, he, he really liked it. Obviously he didn't have this creative control, but came out all right. And also, by the way, I'll just throw in a little tip here. Um, I rendered it using the uh, D noise, which is this free plugin. Um, which does like an AI denoiser from NVIDIA. And uh, it works really well for interiors where you've got a lot of bare walls because uh, the denoiser for Blender is notoriously terrible at uniform, like this white wall here, for example, it will be very bad at making that denoised, but that's exactly what this one excels at. So denoiser is actually really good for textures, but the denoise <laughs> by NVIDIA, that one's better for like flat uniform shapes in my opinion. But anyways, that was the one that I ended up with. So now the final one we are gonna do is this lovely girl here. And this one was sent in by Sebast Sylvester Dorgu. Now I really like this model because the model is actually, it's really well done, very well detailed. Um, and actually I think that this has the, the most potential to be drastically improved with better lighting. Um, because I feel like currently the lighting is like it's hard to see her face. It's hard to really focus on the character. Like the, and this is really where we get into like the uh, emphasis, uh, readability. That's right, part four of the series. We talked about using contrast so that you can actually read the differences. The, the, the difference in contrast between the background and the character is very low. Like there's not a lot of difference there. So um, I feel like there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of potential to make this great. Make it great. So, I think, by the way, for my um, the file that I sent out, the dot blend, I think the ground, the texture wasn't actually packed in it for some reason. So you might actually find that your, um, uh, yeah, the ground like might be like underneath her feet. So that was my mistake. Um, if that happens, just like unplug the displacement, and uh, and it'll actually be where it should, almost. <laughs> uh, but anyways, just, just for those that were playing along at home and they're like, you know, Andrew, why, why does the floor look terrible? Anyway, uh, okay, that's what happens in Blender sometimes, you know? You pack a file and everything's packed except for one thing. Ah, it's very frustrating. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna set this, uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a nighttime scene, okay? That's, that's the vibe that I'm gonna go for here because she's like a, she's a street girl, right? She's edgy, she's an Instagrammer. Let's say she's an Instagrammer. She's an influencer, right? And uh, it's nighttime, right? So she's on the street. That's why there's a street below her. And so we're gonna have like just a blanket amount of like moonlight. But let's overall, let's just focus on one key light. Okay, so let's add a key light. And this is by the way, using cycles, which you know, it means you have to wait for things to render, but it also means that you don't have to, um, you know, 
uh, fiddle with all the shadow and all that glitchy stuff that we had with EV. Now, we could, if we, like you remember in part one, we talked about direction and why it's important to see the form of things. And, you know, we, we could have like something, some lighting coming from here. But then like, if this is a scene, this she's on the street, like where would that light actually be coming from? Like, it's got to kind of make sense for the scene. Um, but also, and, and this is how I actually landed on this lighting setup. In part one, I, I explained how like, beauty shots generally you want to have like butterfly lighting which is like typically if they look like front on of a character it's like right in line with the nose but just like positioned above it um so you could have something like that and then i thought well like this light is so close to this uh screen here that um why not just put it on the screen right okay so the light's coming from the screen now this radius here is actually the like the size of the light like this is almost a ball of light so way too big I want it to be roughly the size of the screen. So something like that, okay? And there we go. Now, what's interesting about this light that we've created is um, uh, the emphasis now is going to be, because of fall off, right? There's gonna be a huge amount of fall off between the face and the, uh, the shoes there, right? Like really sharp fall off, which is great because it's gonna put the emphasis on the face because that's where we want the focus to be. The face is the focus. So um, I think it's overexposed now. I'm gonna check that with false color and you can see that it definitely is. So I'm gonna turn down the brightness of my lamp here um, just so that it's like a little bit yellow on the forehead. So it's like in the upper range of the, uh, e, e, the e exposure range, but something like that. Okay, yeah, and look at the fall. Like it's up here, it's like lightish yellowish green. And then down here, it's becoming blue, right? So it's falling into like, much uh, lower exposure ranges, which is great. It's what we want. So let's go back to Filmic. And there we go, right. So that's that's great. We've got one key light and that's what you wanna start with. Get a nice key light that's, you know, showing the form of things. But like the back part, like her, her our left leg, left left side of the image there, like it's very hard to see the figure and that's not good. We want to be able to understand, like so readability is very poor right now. So rim light, right? That's how you separate something from the background. So I'm gonna add in a lamp right about here and I'm gonna increase this like that. So this is a rim light, right? Now, if I wanna get the top part of this arm there, I would position it there. If I wanted to get the bottom part of the arm, I'll position it down here. Um, it's really up to you, but I'll, I'll go sort of like the top part of the arm. And I'll make this size of this a little bit bigger as well, just so that it wraps around things. It's not like a harsher light. And then the color of this light, it's a street scene. And you remember in the color part of the lighting course, we talked about um, how in the natural world, there's really, it's stuck in the Kelvin scale, but the artificial lighting world um, is, uh, th there's two colors which you won't find in the natural world from light, and that's purple and uh, green. So I'm gonna go with, yeah, like a purpley pinkish color. And this is gonna maybe look like it's nighttime. Maybe she's walking past a, uh, I was gonna say strip club. <laughs> it could be a strip club. It could be red. It could be like the red light district in Amsterdam. Um, but uh, I don't know, a club, uh, a laundromat with a neon sign doesn't have to be a strip club. Um, but Something like that, okay? So something that's gonna tell us, hey, it's it's pink. I, what I don't like though, that now that I've got this light here, I've got a lot of, like I'm losing some emphasis on the face because now there's a bit of contrast on the ground and our eyes are kind of being drawn to the ground. So I'm gonna change this to be a spot lamp and then I'm just gonna control this a little better and go about here, like that. Okay, let's make that a little bigger and a little brighter. There we go, okay. So that's good. Um, now this side of her, the right side of her is now also being dis uh, disappeared. <laughs> You've been disappeared into the background. So I'm gonna duplicate this. Let's drag it on the other side as well. Um, and since it's a different thing, let's go like a reddish color. Uh, we could go red or we could go yellow or we could go green. Um, green is a little, I don't know, getting into that cyberpunk that I'm not a fan of. Everything is like saturated colors. A light blue, that actually looks kind of nice. And then I actually, for my final scene, final uh, thing, I, I made mine blue on the, actually from the screen, right? So it's like a little bit, uh, a little there. And then you can see like the front of her, like it's kind of hard to see the detail here. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'll dial this back just a little bit and let's increase. And basically this, this value here is kind of acting as our area light, like sorry, not our area light, our fill light. It's filling in shadow so that you can still see some detail from the front, but you don't wanna go too far, right? Cause it's also gonna add light to the, the whole scene, which isn't uh, desirable maybe. Um, Something like that. So let's give uh, let's give this a render, and there we go. Looks um, looks pretty good. I think that uh, if we have a look at the, I'll just do one last check on the false color, but pretty good. I mean, we've you could probably maybe add in a um, a better fill light just on the left hand side here, just to because I think I think this world lighting, as I mentioned, it's it's okay, but it's kind of filling in. Ever, like I need it to be a little brighter here and I can't do that without making the ground brighter. So instead of using the world lighting as the fill, I'm just gonna make another lamp here and I will just, obviously that's overkill, obviously, but something, something a little better like that. And let's put most of the emphasis just on that top jacket there. Um, like that perhaps. I mean, I don't know, this, kind of feels a little unnecessary, but something like that. Now, one other thing I might do, and I'm just gonna try this. This could totally fail and I haven't actually done. <laughs> I usually rehearse things, but I'm like, eh, you know what, screw it. Let's see if this actually works. I wanna create a volume, right? Cause I was just thinking like, if this is a street scene, like, you know, she's outdoors. So there is gonna be some natural fogginess, like, cause there's particles in the air. Um, so I'm just wondering if we add in a uh, volume scatter and then let's go 0 0.01. Um, I just wonder if this could look good um, because then it would kind of, instead of the background just being entirely black, it might look a little bit more interesting. Um, I'll probably have to turn on the denoiser, not that one, but this one, the uh, NVIDIA one because it's gonna be better at crushing some of that awful uh, noise in the uniform volume. Anyway, let's have a look, see how this goes. And there you go, uh, I actually like that. It, as I said, it kind of fills in the background, not so boring, and uh, yeah, probably use a few more samples than I have, because you can see that the uh, denoiser thing has kind of filled it in and it looks almost like smoke, which is not terrible, but we've lost all the definition in the hair there, so use more samples, obviously, but uh, it came out pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. So the emphasis is on the face. I probably also, and I did this for my final render here, I moved the camera around just slightly so that you can see the face um, a little bit better than, uh, than what it is over here because you kind of feel like you're not included in the scene. Like she's sort of off in her own world, which is all right, but you want to be able to see the face a little better. So I just moved the camera up and to the right a little bit and it, yeah, changed things, but. Yeah, there you go. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, lighting series. It's now officially finished. Um, yeah, if you enjoy this kind of thing, by the way, like I don't have a Patreon, uh, but one thing you can do is share it with a friend because I will, I listen to what gets results. And if, if people like these series, and I can tell by the number of views it has, then I'm gonna make more like it. Maybe I'll do one on composition um, or color or something in the future if people want it. Um, but uh, you gotta show me, show me that you want it with, uh, with, some, uh, with some views. So share this series with a friend if you found it useful. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.